Hi friends that are out there. Welcome to the Cedar Trails Preschool Parent Information Night via Zoom. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself in case people get on a little bit late. I don't wanna start all the detailed things until people have a bit of a time to get on here. So as I said, my name is Beth Whaley and I'm the principal at Cedar Trails. Um, I think that the most important thing that you need to know about me is that early childhood is my passion. I taught preschool for my teaching career for 23 years. Um, and at that point, I got really tired of having principals who were um, from the secondary education realm who had no idea what was good for little kids and it, with best intentions would try to um, help us do what they thought was best for kids, but it was very often not developmentally appropriate. So I decided to get my, um, mas my second master's degree in administration so that I could someday hopefully be the principal of an early childhood building where I could support my teachers to do what I know and what research says is best for little kiddos. So being at Cedar Springs is my dream job. Uh, I get to be the principal of our pre-K through first grade programs, and um, I get to hire amazing staff who also have a heart for our littlest learners, and we're able to do some really amazing things for our kids. So uh, I'm just going to go through this presentation. It's a little different. It's not like a normal Zoom meeting where I can see you. Um, you can only see me, and if you want to ask a question, you can raise your little hand icon. Uh, if you scroll down by the bottom of your screen, the little um, Zoom bar will come up and raise your hand is one of the options down there. If you raise your hand, um, Mr. Smith, our superintendent is also helping me man the technology tonight. He'll be able to unmute you and then you can talk and I'll be able to hear, it's magic. Um, also, when I am by myself in a room talking, sometimes I talk really fast. So feel free to interrupt at any time. There'll be official time for questions at the end, but I am happy to take questions as we go. Also, we're videotaping this meeting, so it will be up on our Cedar Springs website as soon as we can get it processed. And also the link to this PowerPoint will also be at our preschool enrollment page. So you'll be able to have all of this information as well. 
All right, I'm gonna get going here. Here we go. All right, so Cedar Springs is amazing in that we have tons of great programs for our littlest kids. Um, and I just wanna highlight them for you so that you can figure out what you would like to use to best fit your kiddo. Um, we have a fantastic program for our kids who are our tiniest little babies. This is for, our, for people who are pregnant all the way through four years old. Um, and it is our Parents as Teachers Right Beginnings program. And it's free for anybody that lives in our school district and they offer amazing things. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. But if you've got a preschooler coming and you've got smaller kids, this could be a great opportunity for you to find something um, interesting for your littler kids to do too. We have three-year-old programming at Cedar Springs through our Head Start program. And that is Monday through Thursday, full day programming. It's free of charge. And this is the link right here where you would apply for that. Um, we also have a Tuesday and Thursday morning half day for three-year-olds that is part of our tuition program. So if you don't qualify for the Head Start program or you want less time each week, um, you could apply to our Tuesday and Thursday um, morning session. We also have three and four year olds. So this is our tuition program that is Monday, Wednesday and Friday half days. That is for three and four year olds together. Um, that goes a little bit longer each day. It goes till 1230 instead of 1130. They have a little extended day. They have lunch at school. And when there's enough parent interest, we also offer afternoon wraparound childcare with that program so that you could make that Monday, Wednesday, fr Friday program a full day program if that was something that you were interested in. And then our big four-year-old programs, these are our kids that are gonna be getting ready for kindergarten. We have um, a fantastic Great Start School Readiness Program here, which is our state-funded free four-year-old program. And we have, um, depending on the demand that we have every year, we have five to six classrooms of GSRP. That is a Monday through Thursday full day program. And it is housed this year at Red Hawk Elementary, but in the past it's been at Cedar Trails and it might be in both places next year, but they are still, they still fall under the um, umbrella of early childhood. And so I still get to support them and give them all the love, even if they are over at Red Hawk. And then we also have a tuition Monday through Thursday full day program. Um, it runs the same time as our kindergarten through 12th or through fifth grade programs do 840 to 320. And that's the same for GSRP. Um, GSRP is free. Obviously all three of our tuition programs take tuition. If you're wondering if you would qualify for Head Start or for GSRP based on income, um, this is the income guidelines from this current year. Usually it increases a tiny bit um, for each year. So it might be a little bit higher than this for next year, but basically this is close to that. So to qualify for Head Start, which is our free three-year-old program, you figure out how many people are in your house over here in the column to the left. That can include um, anyone who lives in your home. So if your parents live with you or anything, they all count in the number in the household. And then you just go across. If you have four people living in your house, you can make $26,200 a year um, and to qualify for free preschool for Head Start. And then if you follow that same line right over to this section, this is what you would have to make to qualify for GSRP, $52,400 a year for a family of four. Um, Income is not the only thing that qualifies families for GSRP and for Head Start. And so we always suggest that everybody who's interested in, especially in our four-year-old full day programs, everybody apply for GSRP. Um, if you make a ton of money, you're a millionaire and you know you're not gonna qualify for GSRP, I would suggest you still apply for GSRP just in case. And um, if you don't, then you also can apply for tuition. We have fabulous staff um, that work in our early childhood program. So as I said, I'm Beth Whaley and I'm the principal that kind of supervises all of our littlest kids. 
Jenny Drew is one of my secretaries here at Trails and she's the amazing administrative assistant who takes care of everything for preschool and campus kids. So if you ever have questions, she'll be the gal that you talk to. We have three parents as teachers and Bright Beginnings um, home visitors in our district, Caroline Golly, Laura Genema and Chrissy Weber. And Laura may speak a little bit later toward the end of the presentation. Our two preschool tuition teachers are Whitney Woodard and Nikki Derillo. Those are, they're both housed at um, Trails. And then Betty Kay, Betty Christian is the GSRP early childhood coordinator, supervisor for all of our GSRP classes. Um, and we have Becky Averill, Ellen Brown, Cammie Larson, Candace Punches, and Margaret Rabbers, and all high, high quality people. In fact, um, we have such a good relationship with GSRP that Betty and the Kent ISD always invite all of our tuition teachers to attend all of their trainings and um, we share materials and supplies with them. We really try to run our tuition programs just like we run GSRP because GSRP has the highest standard in the state. Um, when you run a program that's funded by the state, there are lots of requirements to make sure that it is a super high quality program. We're not held to that same standard for our tuition programs, but we choose at Cedar Springs to follow those same high standards. So kids really, I don't think, can even tell whether they're in a tuition program or a GSRP program because we run them very, very similarly. So to be eligible for preschool, you have to be three by September 1st of this coming fall. Um, you can't come because of licensing until your kiddo is three years old. So we have had um, a couple times where we weren't um, full and a couple kids turned three in January and started at the mid-year. So that is something that we talk about sometimes, but the goal is usually that everybody is three before September 1st, 2021. And most importantly, you should be toilet trained. We um, don't hold kids out who aren't potty trained. It just makes it a lot more complicated. So work on it this summer. Um, like I said, our tuition programs and GSRP use the same curriculum. Uh, this is approved by the Department of Ed, and it's called Connect for Learning. The curriculum was written at Michigan State um, when I was there getting my master's degree, so I have kind of a, um, a soft spot in my heart for that. So um, it is a really great developmentally appropriate curriculum that um, really puts all of the learning for math and reading and writing and science and social studies, it's really embedded in play and using manipulatives and collaborating with, with other students to figure out that learning, which is how we know kids learn best. It's really teaches kids to be really independent thinkers and to figure out how to cooperate. Let's see, I have something in the chat. Let's see if I can figure this out. So my son is three, September 21st. He would need to wait to join later. Yep, that's true. You could go ahead and register and get him on the list. And then as soon as he turns three, as long as he was potty trained, he could start. These are um, some of the things that the Connect for Learning curriculum addresses. Um, science experiments, math, literacy, of course, social emotional learning. Um, I argue all the time that I think the most important thing that we teach at Cedar Trails pre-K through first grade is social emotional development, how to be good human beings, how to ask for help when you need it, how to take care of each other. And at Trails, we, we um, our promises are to be safe, kind, responsible, and brave. And so that is what we embed in everything. Um, there's also tons of work around Communication, how do you talk to people and how do you express what you need and what you want, um, being persistent, how to be a problem solver, and how to actually solve some of um, the social emotional problems that you have using tools that we teach you. All right, here's another question in the chat. My daughter will be four October 1st. However, we are having an extremely hard time potty training. I understand. Um, I understand that one of my sons was like that too. So I would suggest that you register for both programs, GSRP and tuition, and we keep our fingers crossed that she's potty trained. And if she's not, then we figure out what to do then. We're really, um, you'll find that there aren't kinder people ever than preschool teachers. And so we're pretty 
pretty flexible about helping families and kids get what they need. Okay, so that's the Connect for Learning curriculum. And like I said, this PowerPoint will be online. And so you can look at it more in more detail if you're interested. Um, I, as I said, have been teaching preschool my whole life. And I am passionate about the impact it can have on kids' lives. And there's a um, longitudinal study that was actually done in Ypsilanti at a preschool called High, High Scope. And they've been tracking this group of preschoolers now for 50 years. So they're all 54 years old now. And they've been tracking their lives to see did, did preschool have any kind of an impact on their life in the long run. And um, one of the, the graphs that they show all the time that I have to show because it's amazing. Um, it Preschool is the gift that keeps giving. So the blue lines on this graph are kids who had preschool and the black lines are kids who did not have preschool. Um, and it just shows some of the long range impacts that having a quality preschool program can have. So um, I always like to say that one of the best things about teaching early childhood is that their minds are still developing, right? So um, under the age of five, kids' brains are still developing and you can actually have an impact on how many syn synapses they grow and how much connection they make in their brain. Um, at five and then for sure by six and seven, your brain really becomes pretty static and it has grown as big as it's going to grow. Um, of course, you can learn new things, but you're, you have the structure you have. So preschool is where we get to get in there and really help these kids build amazing brains um, while, while they're still flexible. So um, you can see 67% of people um, had an IQ over 90 at age five compared to 28% who didn't have preschool. Um, graduation rates from high school are higher if you have preschool. Um, owning a home by the age of 17 is much higher for people who've had preschool and earning over $20,000 at age 40 is also higher. So um, really big deal, long lasting implications. Let me check the chat here. Um, Betty says, encourage signing up for Bright Beginnings. Yes, all of those things are true, Betty. I'm gonna talk about it at the end too. Um, our parents as teachers program can help with potty training. So Betty is right. We sh if you um, find out that you need some help with the potty training to get them ready for preschool, our Bright Beginnings and parents as teachers fam um, ladies would love to help with that. Thanks, Betty. Um, you might be interested in what a day would look like for your preschooler, especially if it's your, your oldest kid coming to school. It's always so exciting and also nerve wracking to send your first, your first baby off to school. Um, if you have a full day program, there's just a little bit more time for all of these things than if you're in a half day program, but these parts are in all of our programs. Planning and recall, that's where kids make a plan about what they wanna do during their choice time. And then they talk about it afterwards. Did it go how they wanted it to? Is there something they would change for tomorrow? And it really helps them figure out that you can be thoughtful about um, your plans and that when they don't go how you would you thought they would go, it's just an opportunity to do it differently next time. And it really helps them with not getting frustrated about um, not having things go the way that they want. We have small group time where we break them up into little groups and they work with their teacher on specific projects, whole group time when everybody's on the carpet together and we do music and movement and read great books and all of that fun stuff. Of course, it wouldn't be school if you didn't get a snack. So we have snack and we have recess time. Our full day programs have recess in the morning and in the afternoon. And our half day programs have recess once a day. Um, every program has choice time. It's super important for kids to learn through play and through things they're interested in. So they set, we set our classrooms up in centers. There'll be pretend play in the building area, a, a writing area, some people call it the office books everywhere, a science center, all the cool stuff will be out and kids get to pick where they want to play. The trick behind that is that teachers specifically plan what they put out in each of those areas so that they can guide the play of the kids. So um, for example, in my block area, I always used to put, and most people do too, um, the little square alphabet blocks. Um, and then in my lesson plans, I would make notes. Like if I had a kid who was really having a hard time remembering the letters of his name, me or my assistant teacher, 
would make sure that when whenever that child went over to play in the blocks, we one of us went too and incorporated those letter blocks into their tower building. And it was a that is how preschool teachers magically embed all the learning that happens um, when kids get to have choice in what they're doing, but teachers really have control of it. Um, in a full day program, we always have a rest time and a lunch. Um, and in our Monday, Wednesday, Friday, half day tuition program, they also have lunch before they head home. Um, why come to Cedar Springs for preschool instead of somewhere else? I happen to think, I may be biased, but I happen to think it's the best preschool program that is in Kent County. And I've been to a lot of them. Um, and prior to coming to Kent County, I actually worked supervising preschools in Ingham County. And I will say that we're pretty awesome here. Um, it's also a really nice transition for your kiddos when they come to kindergarten. They already are familiar with our buildings and our facilities and our teachers. And we plan really nice transition activities where our preschoolers get to come on field trips to kindergarten at the end of the school year. Some of our preschool teachers usually will be in the hallways on the first day of kindergarten welcoming our new kindergartners, our big preschool graduates in. Um, which is just a really nice transition for families and for kiddos. The other thing that's great, which we'll talk about in a minute, Cedar Trails has amazing support services for families and for kids. And as a preschooler, they get access to all of that, just like our K-12 people do. All right, I have another chat. I'm gonna check right here. My son was supposed to start the four-year-old tuition program this year, but we chose to hold off due to the pandemic. He will turn five in November. Should he do the four-year-old preschool or young five? That's a great question. And actually you can choose either. Um, you could either come to, um, am I saying this right, Betty? Let me think about this. going to turn five in, yes. Yep. You could come to young five on an age waiver because to come to kindergarten or young five, you have to be five by September 1st. So he would need an age waiver to come to young five, or he could go to preschool, four-year-old preschool, because he will still be four on September 1st. So you have the choice to go either way. All right, how do parents get involved? We love having parents involved. We also know that um, if we can get parents to feel comfortable and involved at school when their kids are little, then you stay involved and you become the band parents and the football parents in, in high school and it makes a huge difference for your kids. Um, usually, we welcome parents into the classroom all the time. Of course, with COVID restrictions, it's a little bit different, but my goodness, I'm hoping that the fall looks different than it looks right now. But in a normal year, parents are welcome in the classroom. Um, you can volunteer at school anytime. Some working parents like to volunteer by doing things at home for the teacher. We love to have that help. We go on field trips. Um, all of our preschool classrooms have parent-teacher conferences. All of our um, GSRP programs and Head Start have home visits twice a year. We have lots of special events and classroom parties that we always invite families to. And of course, um, you are welcome as a preschool family to join our Cedar Trails PTO. This slide has got all the links for you to check out enrollment everywhere. So um, if you would, all of our enrollment starts March 1st for tuition, for GSRP, and for Head Start. So I'm just gonna click on this link so you can see how you apply for, um, how you find the application process for our tuition program and for GSRP. If you click this link for GSRP, which is our state funded preschool, it just takes you right to their site. Click here to start the application process and you just fill out the answers. It's super, it's super easy. Um, you just go through and submit at the end. The really good thing about that is that if you start by applying to GSRP um, and you don't qualify, they will um, they share all that information with me. So then I can reach out to you later and say, hey, you didn't get into GSRP, but if you're interested in tuition, I'd be happy to help. Let me show you how the tuition stuff works. This is our first year doing it all digitally. So I'm kind of excited. You go to the CS um, Red Hawks homepage, and then click on the enrollment tab. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so you can see. And preschool is right over here on all the things you can enroll for. Scroll down a little bit more here. 
Okay, so this is where you're going to find the recording of this meeting. It's where you'll find the slide deck from this meeting after today. And then um, it's also where you find the enrollment packet and you just click the packet and you can print it out and you can fill it out. And after tonight, there'll be more um, information for you to fill out in the packet. But this is where you find it. You can print it. You can send it as a PDF to us. You can drop it off at Cedar Trails. Anything that would be helpful to you, we can make work. And then it's the same thing. It's a link for Head Start too. So if you are looking at the three-year-old program, you just click there. Um, uh, GSRP likes to get as many people in the program as possible for free preschool. We would love if our, our state could give everybody free preschool because we know it's so important. So the ISD really waits until about the middle of August so that everybody who can qualify can get in. And they know that if they aren't full of people who qualify by income, that they can offer it some to over income people. So, um, you might not know until mid-August whether you get into GSRP, but um, we've never not had room in our tuition program to take care of the people who didn't get into GSRP. You just have to be patient and know that we are working on it. Also, preschool doesn't start when K-12 starts, so um, don't get super panicky um, because they usually start a week or two weeks later. So even though you might not know by the middle of August, you will know before school starts, I promise. And you'll get a welcome letter from your teacher just like the big kids do, okay? Okay, let's see. Q&A, can I open this? I can. Is there a $35 enrollment fee for tuition this year? What if we paid it last year and decided not to send my kiddo? I think that, uh, um, we can definitely figure something out about the fee that you already paid. Um, and yes, there is a $35 non-refundable um, tuition fee this year. Thanks for reminding me. Um, here are the costs for our programs that we have. Um, the four-day three-year-old Head Start is free. Our two-day three-year-old tuition program is $120 a month. Our three-day three and four-year-old tuition program is $228 a month. Our four day, full day, four year old program is $350 a month, and GSRP is free. Um, we also have, and there it has right there for you, non refundable $35 fee, um, fee for our tuition programs. It also says down at the bottom that um, Campus Kids is a bit available for an additional fee. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Campus Kids, which is our before and after school care programs that our preschoolers can access. Um, if it is your first kiddo coming to school next year and you're wondering what it looks like at school during COVID, I put our guidelines here for you just to answer some of your simple questions, but I really am hopeful that we won't need them next year. Um, the link here is to the actual Cedar Springs Public School safety protocol. And so you can, once you have access to the slide deck, you can read the whole big thing. But just to summarize the things that are really important for our littlest learners, we um, all wear masks all the time. The kids wear them, the teachers wear them, we wear them outside too, because um, five and six-year-olds have a really hard time figuring out how to stay six feet apart. And then if you throw four-year-olds in the mix, they really have a hard time. So we have been shocked. Kids do not have a problem with it at all. Even our some of our special needs kids that we thought would never wear masks are wearing them all the time. And it, um, it's just one more thing to teach. It's one thing, to, it's another thing to teach about what we do at school. Um, this year, all of our classrooms enter our building from their outside classroom doors. So there's never any big groups of kids in our hallways at all. And um, we spread lunch out over a longer period of time. And we're using our cafeteria, our gym, and our art room all for art or all for lunch. So we only have two classes together at a time. And those two classes that are together um, are only with that other class um, the rest of the day. So it's two teachers that team together and then they eat lunch together. So they're really potted up in their own little, their own little homes. Let me check chat here. I have a hard time getting my almost five-year-old and my three-year-old to wear masks for more than two minutes. I am not surprised by that. Um, I have 
nieces and nephews that are five, four, and three, and they hate wearing their masks at home. And then they magically wear them at school. I don't know. We get, we always get the best, um, the best of your kids. And then they come home exhausted and feel safe with you and fall apart. So <laughs> um, don't worry though. It really truly is part of what we teach about school. And it, we remind them kindly and we talk about how to be safe and it's something to learn. It's never anything that kids get punished for. Um, we try to have the kids as spread out as possible in the classroom, but we know that, the, as I said, the most important thing about preschool is learning social emotional stuff. So we are as safe as we can be. Um, we let kids work in groups of two and three. Um, when they're done using whatever manipulatives like their Legos that they use, we sanitize them before the next group of kids come over. We thought it would be really hard for them to figure out, but they do not. The teachers taught it really um, explicitly. Here's where you put your toys when you're done so that I can clean them before the next group of kids come. Um, and they're all doing a really good job with that. The other thing that we did this year that's um, a lot different, we added an additional recess. So the teachers are taking kids out for an extra recess because we know the more fresh air they can get, the better. And then we also turned our specials classes into outdoor rec classes. That doesn't really impact your preschoolers because they don't get specials, but um, they are working really hard to make sure if they can do any learning outside that they do. Every classroom, every doorway in the building has hand sanitizer at it. Kids know they sanitize on their way in and on their way out. Um, and it's going really, really well. As you, I'm sure you've seen from the statistics, it doesn't seem that our kids are getting sick at school, which is amazing. I spoke earlier about our amazing support team that we have that we can wrap around our kids at Cedar Springs Public Schools and at Trails. And even if, um, even if Red Hawk still is housing our GSRP teachers next year, um, those families also have access to this great staff that we have at Trails too. We have a full-time school counselor here, Mrs. Anderson. She's amazing. Um, and uh, she shared a little flyer. Usually these people would all be sitting in the um, gym and you could walk around and talk to them, but they had to send me their, um, their flyers this year instead. Um, Christine does amazing stuff. She does classroom lessons on social emotional growth and how to use their calm down spot and how to be a good friend, things like that. She also um, will pull kids one on one if the parent asks for weekly sessions on how to be a good friend or how to work through parents getting a divorce or grandma and grandpa passing away or something, anything like that. She's really good. And she also pulls um, little groups together, friendship groups, um, and teaches them how to be good friends with each other. We um, are lucky enough to participate in KSSN um, at Cedar Springs Public Schools, which is um, an org, it's kind of an umbrella organization that puts um, all the resources in place for families in a school setting. So um, we have Arbor Circle as part of that, which is a therapy um, service that actually can happen at your house. And so we've got Christine Anderson, our school counselor, running groups with kids, but then we also have Elise Wafert and she's our Arbor Circle therapist. She can do um, counseling and therapy with kids right in school, but she can also come to your house after school if that's helpful. She's amazing. And then we also have our own um, DHHS worker that is housed right in our building. So for example, if you wanna use um, Arbor Circle for your kiddos, um, but you don't have insurance, we have a DHHS worker right here who can help you apply for um, Medicaid and get all of that stuff. If you need food help, if you need anything, housing assistance, anything, we have everybody right, right here. Um, I'm going to just show you some of the things that KSSN has done in our community this year with her little flyer here. Um, they run our whole food drive. Um, they do lots of collaboration with North Kent Connect and they plan Christmas um, gift drives and Thanksgiving feasts and all kinds of amazing things. We have um, contact with the Mel Trotter Ministries to find housing for people who are homeless. We have a really, really strong um, homeless advocate that works right in our district to really help everybody with transportation and accommodations and anything that they need. Um, and we also um, wrap around, as I said, with DHHS. Um, we're really lucky as well that we have Cherry Health um, right on our campus right here. And they can actually take your kids, if you give them permission, there's forms you fill out at the beginning of the year 
If you have a kiddo who's not feeling good at school, you can give permission and they will come and get them in a van and take them over to Cherry Health and give them, a, give them an appointment. So it's, it's really amazing. I'm uh, getting a dry mouth from talking so much. Uh, I said earlier, we have uh, before and after school care that your, your preschoolers can access. They can access it on any day that they are in school here. So um, for example, if your kiddo goes to the Monday through Thursday full day four, four year old program, they could come at 6 a.m. for before school care and they could stay after school till 6 p.m. But they wouldn't be able to come on Friday because they don't have school on Friday, okay? Um, the fees for this are $9 for before school care, $9 for after school care, or $17 for both. And you get to um, turn in your schedule weekly uh, and you can pick and choose what dates you need. We are really, really careful with our preschoolers in our before and after care program um, because we wanna make sure they're getting exactly where they need to go. So we actually meet our, our campus kids staff, meet our preschoolers at their classrooms and walk them where they need to go. If they are, um, over at Red Hawk in the GSRP programs, and they we bus them back here, and then our campus kids staff get them right off the bus and walk them right to campus kids. Let me see, I got a couple more questions. Um, uh, yes, the question is, do we take DHS payment for campus kids? We surely do. Um, and then here's another question. Our son is the oldest. He'll be almost four when he starts, and it's our his first time in school. What should we know by the time he's? What should he know by the time he starts school? For example, counting to a certain number, recognizing the letters of the alphabet, etc. I have um, a really good answer to this, and it probably isn't exactly what you want to hear, but I will tell you that all a kiddo has to do to be ready for school, whether it's for preschool or young five or kindergarten, is be the right age. That is it. That is the only requirement for them. Ready for school really should mean we are ready for your baby with whatever experience and knowledge they bring. That is the best part about early childhood is that the teachers are adept at individualizing instruction for each kiddo that comes. Um, so no worries. I don't want you to feel like they need to know their address or how to tie their shoes. None of that. Um, if I could give you ideas of things to practice before you come to school. It would be how to put your coat on, um, how to zip your coat, although we teach them that too. Um, how to use the bathroom, how to wash your hands when you're done using the bathroom, um, how to sit crisscross applesauce on the floor for two minutes at a time. Um, with my kids, we used to just play games when we were driving in the car. So anytime they could recognize a sign out the window, that's pre-reading skills. So if they see the big M for McDonald's and they know it's McDonald's, that's recognizing that that big M means something other than a yellow arch in the, in the sky. So anytime you, you can have them read the signs that they see or packages that they see, that's a great way to do it. You can play um, sing counting songs and ABC songs when you're driving in the car all of that stuff, but always just make it fun and um, don't ever be stressed about it. All right, I got a couple more questions. Sorry if this was covered, but how many students are in each class? That was not covered, thank you for asking me. Our GSRP classrooms are 16 students with two staff and our um, tuition programs um, run on a one to 12 ratio, but we try to keep it closer to one to 10. So this year our um, half day programs only have 10 kids in there with two adults and our four day full day program has 20 kiddos with two adults. And like I said, two, two adults with um, 16 kids in GSRP. If my daughter is going to be four on November 7th, can I sign a waiver and have her attend the four year old all day preschool? Um, you don't actually have to sign a waiver for, um, for tuition preschool. Um, you can sign an age waiver for GSRP, I think. Um, but for tuition, we have a little bit more flexibility. And so um, we would just sign her up and uh, get what we needed, okay? Okay, one more question. Oh no, oh no. Do pre-K kids ride the school bus? Um, all of our GSRP and Head Start kids, or no, that's not true, Head Start does not. All of our GSRP kiddos um, 
have busing as an option. And in the last two years, we've started offering transportation on the buses to our tuition kiddos too, as long as there's room and as long as we're still already stopping near their home. So we have yet to not be able to offer busing to people who needed it because um, Jerry Gavin, our transportation director is amazing. Um, so yeah, we pretty much can get anybody a bus ride who needs a bus ride. Let's see, do I have another question? I'm good. All right, just a couple more slides, friends. Um, I was talking to you about Bright Beginnings and parents as teachers, and I said that Laura Genema was actually on this call. We're going to see if she can, if we can actually unmute her and let her talk. Um, but I just wanted to tell you about this great program for prenatal to four years old. Um, they um, do monthly home visits with families, and it's amazing. I used to be a parents as teachers. Um, parent educator too. It's so much fun to go in and help somebody with prenatal care and then meet their new baby and then go when the baby's two months old and teach them what they can do to help with the next developmental um, milestone. It's a really, really amazing personal program. We also, they also have multiple play groups um, throughout the month, I mean, throughout the week where you can come together with kids your same age and actually meet parents whose baby also have two-year-olds or whatever. And kids get to meet friends, but it's also a really nice way for parents to meet the parents of the kids their kids are gonna go to school with eventually. They also do vision and hearing screenings and everything right there. And they can connect families to resources. Um, Laura's gonna talk, I see we got her right here, but I just wanted to show you this great flyer that they just sent me of the support that they are doing right this year, even with COVID. Um, at Cedar Springs for our families. So we've got um, 20 families right now that are getting home visits um, at least monthly. And some of them are by twice a month. 10% um, of our kids are four and five. Um, and so if you have a four or five year old that maybe you don't wanna put in preschool yet, they can still participate in the play groups and the great stuff at Parents as Teachers. And also Parents as Teachers and Bright Beginnings can help you get your kids enrolled for preschool when it's time. Um, we've had 37 referrals for food assistance and housing and house health screenings, all of those things. We've done, they've done 107 screenings for us for um, um, developmental screenings um, and also um, vision and hearing screenings. It's pretty cool. Every time they come for a home visit, they bring a book for the family to um, keep. And um, like I said, we have four amazing women who take great care of us here. Um, even during COVID, they have been able to do virtual home visits, which are some of the cutest videos I have seen. And um, we can't wait to start our playgroups in person again. All right, Laura, what else would you like to say? Well, hello, everybody. I'm Laura Genema, and I work with Bright Beginnings and Parents as Teachers. And you did an awesome job explaining our program. I don't know what else really I have to say. Um, that was awesome. So just real quick, I just wanted to share that um, the home visits right now are virtual and um, even we can even do them outside as well. Um, but those are really fun. You get to um, have your questions answered personally by us. Um, you know, so like the potty training thing that was talked about earlier, we can definitely help with that. But any other issues that you may have as well, whether it's sleeping, eating, um, you know, getting your child ready for school, like all of that stuff we can help out with. We do go over um, language and gross motor and fine motor skills, problem solving, personal social skills, and definitely social emotional. So the home visits are very, very important. And uh, like you said, we do, we do give you a book as well when you do these home visits. And play groups are an awesome way to meet families in the school. Like we have made so many connections with families. Um, right now they're virtual, but we're hoping soon we can do them again at Red Hawk. We have an awesome room all set up and it's a really, really good way to um, meet other families that are in the district as well. And we do have screenings um, to do at the home visits as well. And we can definitely connect you to a lot of resources that we have in the area. So it's a really awesome program. So check out the website um, that's listed here, or you may call that phone number that's also listed on the, on the screen. Thanks, Laura. 
Okay, that's it. That's all my information. I get to stop talking at you. Um, what questions might you have? It's very strange that I can't see you, but I can see your your chat comments and um, also um, when we my my contact information is on the Cedar Springs website preschool website too. So you can email me or call if you have questions, and my magic. Uh, Admin assistant Jenny will also help with that stuff. Anything else I can help people with? I really appreciate you being here tonight and hopefully in the fall we'll be in person. Oh, here's a question. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm excited to meet you all next fall. Welcome, Betty. Oh, let's see, are these all thank yous or are there questions? Oh, here we go. We have a three-year-old who will be four in October. Would you suggest him going to the three-year-old program or the three and four-year-old? So you're talking about tuition. Um, I think that if you have, if they're gonna be four, I would put them in the three and four-year-old program unless they've never been around other kids before. If you haven't ever done um, like church school or they don't have a lot of cousins they play with, then um, the three-year-old program would be great. But if they've had some opportunity to be with kids in groups occasionally, I think the four-year-old program would probably be a really good idea. And then depending on how that goes, you could do young five the following year or anything like that. Any more questions? Go. Another thank you that I appreciate. All right. Well, you know how to find me. Track me down at Cedar Trails. All right. Have a great um, night. Everybody. Sorry, Beth. Oh, there is Beth. there is one more Q and A in the Q and A section. All right. Let me refresh. Oh, here we go. Got it. Thank you, Scott. Um. Okay, typo, I'm gonna read this again. My son will be four September 21st and my daughter will be three in February. So could we apply to both programs? Gotcha. Um, you definitely can apply for both programs um, and we can usually offer a multi-kid discount um, and you might qualify like your four-year-old may qualify for GSRP, and then you would only have to pay tuition for your three-year-old um, when she turned three in February. So it would only be a half a year of two-day um, tuition, okay? All right, now I think my questions are gone. Thanks again for coming and give us a couple of days and we'll have all of this posted on the website. Have a good night.